So welcome to tonight. Welcome to our guest, Ian Levy, who's in our um, webinar from the USA. Thank you so much for joining us, Ian. Hey, no problem at all. So when we think about this idea of utilizing hip hop, right, to sort of build on this idea of um, where, where sort of hip hop came from and the origins of hip hop, right, it's always thrived in moments where resources were lacking, where institutions had put people in positions where they were then made to struggle, right? Um, and so when the stripping of music programs happened or when, you know, a new highway was placed in the Bronx that separated communities entirely and created a, a lot of po poverty that was directly connected to that structural change, hip hop was born, right? And so hip hop is always this thing that is pushing through, that is beautiful and that is asset rich and that is always emerging. And when I think about our need as helping professionals or folks interested in, in work of helping, um, we have to be, like our, our approaches should be humanizing in, in, in all of their efforts. They should be focused on, on the talent and the assets and on the beauty that folks that we're working with bring into spaces and not focus on the pathology, right? So a lot, and I'm saying that because a lot of folks see hip hop, right? And they just see a crack in the street. They don't see the road. There's all these stories that people tell about hip hop as this demonstrative thing. And sure, are there things in hip hop where there's like misogyny or homophobia or transphobia that sometimes are prevalent in hip hop? Sure, but that's because they're prevalent in society at large. And hip hop is always going to place a mirror to society at large. But what hip hop also is, is this beautiful, ever growing, ever asset rich and developmental thing. And so our work, um, and I pull from a lot of Bettina Love, who's a scholar in the States, specifically in, in the world of education and teacher ed, but I think has a lot of implications for our work across disciplines, is if we're really trying to celebrate you, if we're really trying to celebrate youth and celebrate assets and focus on joy, particularly black joy, we have to be willing to create new ways of engaging and getting rid of the ones that don't work, right? And so for me, um, when I think about our work as, doing that right is not being like pathologizing and being protective and asset focused and developmental um i don't think we need to look any further than hip-hop right i think hip-hop has always been that it's always had that potential and so in my work i've and i've been doing this work um as a researcher and as a school counselor since Ooh, I want to say like I first started doing this work in around 2010 um, and I first published a piece in 2012 and I've been really so it's quite some time now. Uh, my, my focus has been on trying to challenge the traditional approaches that we have to counseling, which we know are rooted in like white Western Eurocentric ways of knowing and being and oftentimes fail to engage black and brown youth because they're not rooted in their reality. There are, there's massive evidence to support this. When like you can look at just relational issues that like the fact that there's a sense of distrust that a lot of black and brown youth have towards helping professionals. Um, and so even if we increase more access to clinics in terms of placing more clinics in the area, if we're not actually providing services that are reaching and, and engaging the community, then we're just going to perpetuate those stereotypes. So there's a ton of issues in terms of access, and that's a whole other talk. But my purpose, or why I, I love this work and what I've been trying to do is to identify ways that hip hop has already been doing that healing on its own outside of institutions. People in here were saying, I write for my own healing, right? Of course. And people have gone to hip hop in the absence of counseling forever. In the absence of schooling, in the absence of music programming, right? And so our job is to then say, well, what could happen if we brought in a lot of what is already happening at the community level into the very offices, into our groups, into our individual sessions, into our community centers, into our schools, right? That's how we start to transform and work with um, youth in, in these new ways. And so these are a few different practices. I'm not going to describe all of them, but I am going to say that I've highlighted what I will call in my work as community-defined practices. So things that folks who like hip hop already say work, right? Like we know they work because people are doing them, right? People are writing lyrics all the time to process the things that they're going through. 
right? People have been making mixtapes as mechanisms to have their voices heard over beats that other people have made because they didn't have the money to get them. And that's been part of the culture. In the same way that people have been tagging trains, uh, graffitiing on subway cars to make sure that their messages were seen all around the world. The folks have identified ways to be heard and to share their stories in the absence of formal pathways to do that since hip hop's inception. Folks congregate in hip hop ciphers for that very reason, right? And studios exist for that reason. And so in my research, I've seen that lyric writing, when we do it one-on-one -on -one with young people or even in groups can lead um, to increased emotional self-awareness and, and stress coping skill development. Uh, I've done a few studies around mixtape making and group work where we've seen decreases in stress and anxiety and depression. Um, we've seen that ciphers offer a lot of opportunities for group counseling and dynamics, like the therapeutic dynamics that we need for, for group work to occur, for people to feel comfortable emoting, that, that ciphers are really, really great spaces to share. And I'll break that down a bit more on the next slide. Um, and then lastly, the studios are these environments that can invite folks in to place new hats on, that there's something really valuable, especially in school spaces, to be able to walk out of a classroom that maybe did not feel uh, like a space where your identity was allowed or invited or called on in an authentic way, and then walk into the counselor's office where there's a full studio and be able to sort of take off this other, pers this other sort of uh, person that you've had to be during the day in order to be perceived as successful or understood within that school environment. And so let me break down the cipher with y'all real quick, and you can throw um, some comments in the chat. And so this is a cipher on a bus, right? So there's a group of people rapping together on a bus. One person is, is sharing and some others are, 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 are engaged as well. And let me move forward again. I was looking for the chat so I can see what you were saying. But um, if we break this down, what do we think this person in the middle of the cipher is doing? And we might know this organically, but let's just throw it out there. What is the person in the middle doing with the chain and the handout? What are they doing? Rapping. Yeah, they're rapping, right? They're probably rapping. Most, prom most probably rapping for folks that uh, watch any performance or music video, right? Like rappers love the rap hands, right? So that hand is like they're rapping. They're rapping. They're engaging. They're the ones sharing. What do you think this person is doing who's got their hand like on this like railing? Uh-huh. The bass face. See, that's like in New York, we call it the stank face which I think you're referring to the same thing, right? So that's that face of support and encouragement. That's that, like, I just heard something super dope face, right? And that's what it is, right? So this face is happening. This guy's saying something. This guy's making a face like, yo, I love what it is that you're saying. What do you think this person with the backwards hat is doing and, like, the gum in their mouth? What, what do you think this person is doing? He's a supporter. He's a supporter, Okay. He, he looks like he's processing something. Something's hit him and he's thinking, he feels like yeah. he's got a thinking face on. Hell yeah. So he could be, he could be processing something. He could be looking at, see here, looking into the crowd to get them engaged. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he could like also be raptured. looking, right? Oh. Sorry, he huh? looks like he's enraptured, like he's gone into a flow state himself, like he doesn't look there. His eyes are meditative. Yeah, he's tapped in for sure to what's happening. And I would make the argument that maybe, and who knows, I mean, who really knows, right? It's a picture. It could be anything. All of these could be true. That he's going to maybe jump in next. Maybe he's thinking about what he wants to say next in the cipher, right? And what's cool about ciphers, right, for folks that know this, right, is like, if you're going to jump in, you got to rhyme off like the last rhyme before you, or if you've pre-written your own verse that you want to share, um, you, you might be reciting it in your head. So like make sure that when you come in, you say it right or that it fits over the beat the right way. And so there's all of this stuff that happens, right, organically. I, don't, I promise you that, like, these guys didn't walk on the bus and say, like, yo, we should have a cypher right now. And, like, when I rhyme, like, scrunch your face up and make me feel good, right? Like, these don't happen, right? Like, this just organically happens. Cyphers just bust out on street corners or whatever. I mean, maybe you do arrange to arrive somewhere occasionally and have a cipher with some folks, but a lot of the time, these things are organic. Somebody starts rapping, somebody starts making a beat. The folks around the cipher look like they're even like clapping and making the beat, right? So there's this organic space that's created. And what's great in ciphers is that I would argue and have argued in my research that ciphers, having youth share out in ciphers, calls on this knowledge that youth already carry with them 
that are like group dynamics on steroids, right? So they're like better than any group dynamics that we can ever create if we tried to like list them on a list and say to youth, like, let's respect what we're saying to each other or like, let's not interrupt each other, right? Like when a cypher starts, people know how to support. When somebody starts rhyming, people know how to like tell them that what they heard was dope. They scrunch their face up, they yell things out, right? They rhyme, they, they say words like in the pockets in between their verses, right? Like when somebody wants to get into the cypher and not cut somebody else off, they know how to like, like, uh, uh, or they, they know how to get in. They know when a verse might end so they can tell, so they jump in and don't interrupt them, right? So there's all of this navigation and these group dynamics that are naturally occurring, this equal terms at talk, and there's safety in that, just like we see in the chat, right? There's safety in that there's the ability to express yourself and feel supported. Um, there's, you're going to be challenged to elevate yourself, and all of these things happen without having to say that they're going to happen. And in my research, I've seen that. I've interviewed a bunch of rappers about why they go to Cyphers. And far and away, people talk about just going because it's a place where they feel like they can just talk about themselves, where they can emote, um, where they feel like they're going to be pushed to be better, where they can elevate their craft. Um, and that there's these rules that people know. And they weren't taught them. They were just there, right? So studios, so Cyphers for me in my work practically have always been like a starting point. Like if I'm working with young people in group sharing, if I'm working with young people to write a verse for the first time, and if it's like the first session and they've never done it before, I might give them a really quick activity where they, you know, pick four things that nobody knows about them and then create some words that rhyme with that and then write a verse, with, like write four, ver four bars about some things that are special about themselves and then circle up in a cipher and share those things. And why am I doing that? Well, because when we do that, I'm calling on the knowledge that I believe are, is already within the individuals that are in that space. I'm trusting in the people that come to the cipher to enact the very dynamic that I know, the very like group dynamics and, and space that I know that they're capable of creating, right? Which is very different than pulling people together and be like, okay, so here are the rules for our group. Because that's now external, right? It's not trusting in them to see it. It's not trusting them to know it. Then we have a cipher. And after we have a dope cipher and people say things that are great and people cheer them on and pat them on the back, zap them up, whatever it is, when the cipher ends, then I can step back and be like, yo, let's create a list about the rules that we want to have for this space based on the cipher. When you were sharing, what did you like, right? So on and so forth. We can create our norms then, but now it's based off the folks that I'm working with, knowing that they know how to maintain that space, right? Um, and feeling it and experiencing it. And so I love Cypress for this reason. And Cypress is one example of the work, right? But it's all about community-defined practices. So to kind of jump forward, and I'm bearing in mind time here, um, is it cool if I go like 10 minutes more on this? Kids? Sure thing, sure thing. Okay, cool. So... Mixtape making is another part of this process, right? And so for me, my group work has looked at mixtape making um, and studio creation, right? So what would it look like to work with a group of youth during group work to construct a studio and then record a series of songs about different emotional experiences that they're enduring in that space? And, I, and there's a lot of theory behind that that you can read another time, but I want to break through. That's sort of the idea of this, right? Um, so I just ran this group that I want to break down. This was in New York City. And um, there was a, there was a old um, art closet, like, in, uh, or sorry, a, yeah, it was an old storage closet, as I meant to say, in the back of a library. This is in a school in Hell's Kitchen in, in Manhattan, New York, right? And so there was a unused, space in the school and I convinced the principal uh, to let me have a little bit of funding to build a recording studio with youth where we could engage it in some hip-hop therapy work. And we cleared out the space together and I stood with a group of youth in an empty room and I said, we got some money. What do you imagine this space could look like if it was a studio? What would you want? All right? What studios have you been in? What has it been like to be in them? And how do we create that space here, right? Really processing that with them. We drew blueprints. 
right? We decided where things would go and we ordered, we ordered a desk. They wanted LED lights, which are these lit up lights and they can change colors and all this cool stuff, right? We got wall padding, we got some curtains. So they felt like nobody would be able to see them while they were in there. So they'd have some privacy because the pri privacy was really important. Um, they talked about different programming they wanted. Like They were like, yo, do you have auto-tune? I want to make sure that I can record myself and sound the way I want to. Um, can we get a beat machine? Like all these things that youth were asking for, and we got them. We got them. We just built a space with youth. And then we engaged in researching and writing um, songs within that space and recording them and sharing them. And I think there's so much I'm seeing in the, in, as this practice tip that kids is, is collecting here. Inviting young people to create the space is very different than me saying, I made a studio for youth to work in, right? So there's a dip, like I can create a studio and invite youth into it, but then it's not their studio. It's my studio that I'm inviting them into, right? And we all know that it, it's different. Like when I'm like, think about it. Like when I'm at my house, I know I'm at my house. I'm different, right? When I walk into somebody else's house, I, even if I know them really well, I can't fully be fully myself. It's not my space, right? The idea here is that we're like, I'm supporting youth in creating spaces that there are their own. Out and, and I want youth to be like, that's my studio. Like that's the studio I built. And telling other students, like we built that space. Did you go check it out? There's an ownership of the space. Um, and now they're invested in it because they built it, right? And, and um, I think you'll see that as we continue to go through this. So we built this really great space. Um, and one of the culminating kind of projects from this process that I just described of this space was a song, right? And so youth made this song um, really great. They got some college, some friends of theirs to make some artwork um, about, the, you know, from this process as well, like to represent the song. We then got the principal to uh, email out the album artwork to all of the teachers that students had at the very beginning of the day. And in the States, we call it homeroom, but it's sort of the first class of the day and all students are in it across the building. And the teachers got this piece of artwork, right? And they were able to display it to students on the board. And then over the loudspeaker in the school building, we played the student song. And the students did a little intro to their song, and then we played this song across the community. And I just want to break, I want to play a little bit of this for you. Um, I'm just going to jump forward to where I know it starts, so you can hear a, a bit of this. Skipping forward a little, yeah. Them trenches for my mama, hold on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've been down for, we've been down for so long, so long. We gon' make it out them trenches for my mama, hold on. We gon' make it out them trenches for my mama, hold on. I've been asking God for getting it, trying to right on my wrong. I was only 13 when everything started going wrong. The ones I thought who loved me was the ones who did me wrong. I really came from nothing, so I put it in these songs. But I really lost my brother, everything keep going wrong. But I do this for my family, so I gotta stay strong. Girl, I'm trying to stay strong. Girl, I gotta stay strong. So now I gotta go up. Ain't no time for hold up. We were youngest from the bottom, now everybody know us. I gotta stay up for my girl, cause everybody's showing love. Now they seeing that I got it, everybody pulling up. So now I gotta go up. Ain't no time for hold up. We were youngest from the bottom, now everybody know us. I gotta stay up for my girl, cause everybody's showing love. Now they seeing that I got it, everybody pulling up. We been down for, we been down for so long. Hey, and I'm gonna pause it for there. The the hook just just out, and I'll keep going here. So, oops. If I can figure Thanks, out how to get past. Thanks so much, Jean. Just a little heads up on time. It's one minute past eight. We can go till five past. I just wondered, was there an aspect to this that we can have as a creative takeaway? Yeah. Um. Sure. So, like an activity. Yeah. Okay, yeah, let me see what I can what I can do for you here. So um, one thing that I like doing, and I sort of alluded this 
alluded to this before, and let me share this uh, with you all. So um, one of the tools that I like doing, especially in like a first session with a young person to maybe get to that product that I was just talking about, I like to do this like backpacking activity. Um, let me, I have it pulled up here, so let me just share it. Um, and just to say, we're in a webinar that's been recorded. So at the point of doing the activity, we can actually, um, if if there was anything that people didn't want us to share, we can avoid sharing anything. And secondly, um, we're in a in a public space here. So any activity that we do, we would only share at a level that would be comfortable for other people to hear and to witness and also for us to share. So if level 10 was sharing about uh, a personal, you know, life changing event that was negative, then it wouldn't be the right space because we're, you know, in a public environment. I don't know if right. you can see my cat then meowing, but. Um... <laughs> cool, okay. well, let me, I, I'm gonna get a volunteer then for this and you can also kind of practice this on your own, but we'll do this really quickly um, and we'll just kind of go through one of them. So this is an example of um, a sort of structured process for writing rhymes that I like to do with folks, uh, particularly when you've maybe not written some rhymes before. It's very helpful to like scaffold this out for folks. So um, can I have uh, uh, one volunteer for this and I'll step you through it after I have said volunteer. I'm happy to volunteer. <clears throat> Hey, okay, cool. Thank you so much. All right, so if I were to ask you for one word that you would use to describe um, your like support system, what would that word be? It's fragmented. This is a multi-syllable word. So now we're gonna have some upper level rhyming. Can I get a synonym for this word as well that maybe is is also, just so we can demonstrate this for folks, maybe a synonym to fragmented. I love that word. We're gonna Broken. rhyme with it. Broken. Mm -hmm. Say that again? Broken. Broken. Yeah, okay, these are both good. Yep, thank you. So I do this with you, right? So like describing support system, you could have multiple words here that do that, right? Um, now, can I have, let's do broken just for the sake of rhyming because I think it's gonna be easier for this exercise. Um, yeah. Can you give me three, like three words that rhyme with broken? Woken. Um, uh, spoken. I kind of want to use the word folk, folk. <laughs> um, I, I kind of want to make words up, so. But, <clears throat> You got two there, haven't you? And anybody, anybody else in the chat can throw one in if you if you have one as well that you wanna. That token, you wanna, token, uh, token. I got put token. One. Okay, cool. Make yeah. it, I'm making the word up. I don't know if that doesn't doesn't quite exist, but it still has relevance. Yeah. Okay. Sweet. So now I'm gonna have you take. Did you put token? I, I put. I said choking, actually. Ian. Oh, choking. Sorry, yeah. I saw token. No, in no, the chat. I wanted to, okay. I wanted to so like we'll make like... a word. But I like your word, token, as well. So you just got... Well, say... we'll do like choking, but you're doing it like this, right? Just to say that we're at five past eight now, so we'll just carry on for a little bit longer, but we want to make sure that people have a chance to ask you questions, Ian. So we'll wrap up in yeah, a minute. Yeah, totally. Thank you. Thank you. Totally. So no problem. So the idea here, right, is just quickly, we are going to, you could write four bars now. Like if you were okay. writing rhymes for the first time, we could write four lines that end in each of these words. So we could have a sentence that ends in broken, a sentence that ends in woken, a sentence that ends in spoken, a sentence that ends in choken. Yeah. Then we could go to our next, then we could go to our next support word and rhyme it, our next support word and rhyme it, our next support word and rhyme it. And by the end, you now have a 16 bar verse that you've scaffolded out with a person around in this example, their support system, right? Or words that describe their support system. You could change the words or the themes to be around anything, to be around family, to be around like moments that make you happy, right? Like anything, you could switch the topics around. And then it's through that discussion, 
right, about the lyrics as well, that you can dig even deeper into somebody's narrative and learn more about it. So I'll pause here because I do want to make time for questions, but the idea is that we could take these words and write sentences and you can get as layered as you want, right? Like a very, it's a very basic way to rhyme is just to end each line with the word that rhymes, right? Like, and that's fine. If it's like, if that's, that's what you want to do, that's wonderful, right? You can also get more intricate and rhyme with more than four words and have interior rhymes and all this stuff. But like, what I like about this activity is that it can be utilized by kind of across the, the spectrum in terms of people's um, level of knowledge of rhyming or experience rhyming, right? And it's really broken down. Some people are going to be able to be like, let me put a beat on and write about feeling broken, right? Um, and they might be able to do that. Others might need a more like broken down approach. So Ian, the support word for the second one, could it be like thinking about what the support network I would want to have in place? It could be more positive. I think that's that. a fire. I think that's a fire idea, right? Okay. And that's you. the creative. Yeah, that's the creative nature of this, right? You could even do a full song where the first verse is on like the struggles of the support system. And then another 16 bar verse on the second verse is about solutions to that support system. And then you make a chorus for the song that's about support system. And now you have this entire song where you've supported somebody in exploring at first all of the parts of themselves that they wanna work on and then solutions to that in the second verse, right? So, and I'm just building up your idea, right? So like, what's cool about this is like, if you can get so creative because it's hip hop and that's what we do, right? Like that's the cool thing. It's like, you wanna have a cool concept, right? You could have two people uh, where one person does the first word and the next person does the second word and the next person does the third and they go back and forth, four bars, four bars. And maybe they have a conversation and talk to each other about their support systems, right? So you can start using this in a multitude of ways. Um, and I, and so anyways, I just, I, I, this to me is, is a takeaway that I thought uh, would be useful and helpful. And so, um yeah sorry I, when i say um when i say fire i mean like dope like in new york it's just like yeah that's fire like flame like it's great that's just the that, that's when i said that's fire i that's a term of, of endearment for sure like that was a great idea thank you for that um thank you yeah sir. okay so i'm gonna pause here and take some questions okay so Anybody who'd like to ask a question, I think the best thing to do is to um, just come off the mic, mute and jump straight in. And just to let you know, we'll be wrapping this section up at uh, 8.25. So I'll be drawing the question and answers to a close at 8.24. Thank you. Hi, Ian. Um, how did you get into this? Hey. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like. I mean, I've only heard yeah. of poetry therapist last year for the first time. Hip hop therapist this is the first time I've ever heard of it, and it's sick. And I just want to know how you got into that. Yeah. Um, wow. Okay. So I try to be brief here. I grew up in a family of musicians, right? So I have a huge background in music making, and um, I went to college in New York City for psychology, and then went to study to be a school counselor. While at the same time, I was um, exploring myself through through my own lyric writing because uh, I'm an MC. And so I was sort of in love with hip hop and going to hip hop spaces and, and feeling all the benefits of doing that while also studying psychology and then thinking about studying counseling. Um, and I had a class uh, where the assignment in the class was, it was a theories and counseling class, was to like write about like your own theory using existing theories. And so I was thinking a lot about my experiences in hip hop, about the gaps that are in the literature around the lack of culturally responsive counseling theories that sort of push back against like mostly white Eurocentric ways of knowing and being in counseling and therapy. And so I started researching like hip hop based approaches and I stumbled on, if you've attended an earlier webinar, you might have met uh, JC Hall, who talks about Dr. Edgar Tyson. So I studied upon, uh, on some of Dr. Edgar Tyson's work, as well as some of the work of Don Elegan and some other folks. And what I really, what I, I, I realized that there were folks that were doing a lot of this stuff and that was so cool. And so I thought, well, let me, let me write about, let me write about sort of what I think my contribution to this, like, bulk of, of work um, could be. And for me, I really wanted to lean into school counseling because I was going into schools and, um, and I 
And a lot of the work that I had read was more, was a lot of like foster care settings, right? And a lot of like outside of school and very clinical settings and not like, for me, what I wanted to do was look more like across for like the general population of folks going to school. How do they access like hip hop and mental health services? This protective stuff that I was talking about at the beginning. And for me, like studio creation, all this stuff. And so it kind of just happened naturally, right? Like I fell on research that already existed. I started writing my own writing about it. Um, and then I started running studies. And, and, and I was very interested in adding more like empirical support to the work. There was a, when I first started looking, there was certainly was empirical work, but there were a lot of conceptual arguments, which is natural, right? When a field starts developing, people have to like explain why it's valuable. And it's sometimes then harder to get like funding to go do like studies and formal like experimental designs and all this stuff. So I fell into like that, like just like right trying to do as many like formalized research studies as possible to try to make sure that like more people could do it, right? I just thought it was so dope and I was so honored to be able to like contribute to the existing literature. Um, and so, yeah, like I find, I kind of fell into it through my own love for hip hop and then through finding about the works of others and then having like the support and encouragement of mentors um, and a lot of like hip hop education folks that kind of took me under their wing and let me see like what hip hop could look like in a variety of settings and how that could then inform the work that happens in counseling spaces. So I don't know if that answers it, but that's sort of how I fell into it. Yeah, that's good. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm inspired. Is there, do you do online trainings for this stuff? Um, I have done online trainings before. I don't have like a formal um, training series, but I have consulted and done trainings for like different organizations. So if you'd like to try to see what we could do, I, I would love to think about that. But I don't, it's not like I have like a visit this link and sign up for this training kind of offering at, at the moment in time. That being said, I have a lot of literature and, and stuff I could send you and that hopefully you could learn from and gather there. Uh, and then we can talk more as well. Um, if 100%. You're interested. I'll, I'll, I'll contact you later. 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'll drop my website in the chat. Um, there's a, a like specifically like a publication tab and I have a bunch of research articles there, which I think would be insightful. And they kind of look at a lot of things I described here in a little bit more granular ways. So check it out and reach out. I'd love to chat. Thank you. Yeah. Guys, this is a form of hip hop therapy and therapeutic hip hop training. Uh, we are a hip hop uh, training academy. So the Bearing Foundation is an equalities charity and they identified that there's a lack of training in this field and that in general arts and health is majority white middle class um, organizations. So the needs of very marginalized groups, such as black and brown people, um, people um, from different um, countries, um, which might have a majority of black and brown people, or whatever. We have a funding grant to widen access to people to get the training. So we ran a couple of pilots we got community consultation, we got an evaluation report. I'm gonna publish a report on our website very soon. And this is all um, in joint partnership with Birmingham Center for Arts Therapies. So Hip Hop Heels is sort of like put on these monthly webinars. The next one's in April. We've got our own director who's an expert in youth work. He's a singer, he does dance all singing, reggae, drum and bass. And he actually uses mu music as a part of his mentoring practice with young people. So just to let you know, each month we've got a new guest, different part of the world. Last month was Australia, a music therapy researcher. So yeah, with the training pilots that we've just done, we're about to develop a curriculum for hip hop therapy. And so people like Ian and people from the previous webinars will be, you know, recording parts of um, like online videos. So the aim is we'll be spreading the tools, but on a sort of click, play, look at the video in your own time basis, because we're all in different parts of the world, aren't we? <laughs> so then it will be self-learning kind of thing, because right. the demand so high, there's so so few people who are training in it, we thought that it'd be good to get everybody 
from different time zones on an auto sort of uh, pre-recorded course, then you won't have to try and enroll at 5 a.m. Right. Yeah, I can see this as for community mental health and also working. Uh, I wanted to do work with refugees. So it's absolutely, this is great. Yeah, and we can transcribe it into other languages if we have PDFs as well. So, okay. Anyone else got a question? Yeah, if you want to just jump on on um onto your mic um your work's amazing <laughs> yeah, it's really interesting um i want to do you call it therapy with young people like what's their what's their connection with this word therapy i imagine the hip hop <laughs> is the bridge i'm just wondering how you describe what you do and my other question was um if you've done any work around language people sharing in their first language i'm just curious because i'm in northern australia and um there's a huge indigenous first nations population and um often young people speak about five different languages and then in school they often have to speak english so i'm just curious curious about yeah. language as well I'll, I'll start yeah i'll start with the second question first and then i'll start working my way back um the the I've had so many experiences where youth are bringing their native language like to the fore, right? Where they're rhyming in or, or singing in their native language. And I think that's really powerful. And in New York City where I work, um, there's a lot of like Spanish speaking youth um, and then who, who have immigrated to, to the state um, and therefore like are struggling to speak English and are learning to speak English. And a lot of the times, what happens, unfortunately, in New York City schools, which I think is pretty common in most like urban spaces um, globally, and well, particularly within Western countries, I think, is that like folks are made to believe that like they need to get rid of their their native language to feel like they are successful, right? So there's like the the assimilative process that makes one like ignore core parts of themselves, which presents a huge issue in counseling, right? As you think about self actualizing and presenting your authentic self and so how 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 does like hip-hop then offer opportunities to be like well no let's not run from this let's elevate like with this right like and really cool opportunities where you could do that little um exercise with the support system right or that that exercise in particular where like let's say you have like the word the the the, the spanish word for the english word as the second word right and you have like youth are then like almost translating each other, right? You have one person learning or translating back what they're hearing from another and going back and forth in different tongues and like working through this, which I think is beautiful, right? Um, which can then like help with the process of learning the language if that's what is required for you within the school building. As a school counselor, sometimes I'm wedded to those outcomes, but how can I do that in a way that's also honoring and supporting and growing like both? Um, and so I think there's a lot there. Uh, and hip hop, right, is, is multilingual. I mean, like, come on, like, think about what's happening, right, in like South Korea, for example, right? Like, like there, I mean, and that's just one, but like hip hop is, is everywhere. In New York, there's like so much impact of like reggaeton and like Bad Bunny is like huge here. And so like young people want to sound like Bad Bunny. I had kids singing in Spanish and with crazy auto tune while another kid is rapping in English on the same joint. Like, why not, right? Like, let's create some dope stuff. So. I think it honors it um, and, and hip hop can be really beautiful in celebrating like the differences that people bring to a space. Um, Just to say we've got five minutes before break. Yep. Okay. And I'm, I'm a long winded person. I apologize. And then the, the, <laughs> other, piece here is, um, the other piece uh, is around like, what is the reaction to you calling this or me calling this therapy or branding this as therapy? And um I think youth know that that this work is emotion is emotive, right? Um, I don't even know that I necessarily walk up to youth it, in schools. It's interesting, right? Because like as a school counselor, um, I think everybody needs counseling, right? At different levels, if we're really developmental, everybody needs counseling, right? Now, some youth need like long term therapy, right? I don't think that's the only space for hip hop therapy. And in fact, I operate more in the universal, like in the in 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 all of the factors that lead up to. And then I, I, I look at my colleagues in social work and, and clinical mental health to have the long term or 
or the more like diagnosable right population so if we're using these terms right whereas i feel like i'm working with like youth that are coming into high school and dealing with being anxious and uncomfortable and all of the very normal but very emotional and difficult things that we all go through as we transgress right and so like i just for me the um there isn't always even a need to say therapy, right? Like, and, and and like I can just I'm running a group, come through. We're building a studio together, come kick it, right? Like, and and they know that it's emotional because when I interview them, and there was interview data that I didn't have time to get through today, but perhaps we can chat chat another time. But it's in my it's in my uh, in some of my publications too. Youth are talking about like I love going to the studio because I can work through my emotions. Like, so they know it, right? They know it is. Um, and so I feel like the, the need to like really formally sometimes even say it contributes to some of the issues in, in retention. And so for me, it's like, Hey, we're building a studio. You want to come kick it, you know? And at younger grade levels, if I do need to get like permission from parents to run a group or something like that, you know, then we can navigate those conversations, but anybody can come build the studio. Right. And now it's like, yo, what would it be like if we were here all the time? Have you ever thought about group therapy in this space? Yeah. So now the conversation is different um, because there's buy-in and all that stuff. So um, I see a hand and then from uh, Gerardo, and then I think that'll probably be my, my last question until the break. Yeah. Oh, hi. Can I just... Gerardo, oh, oh. Oh, sorry. I apologize. No, I didn't see you want, hand. Gerardo, yeah. Gerardo, why, why don't you do your question? Because I can put my comment in the chat. Okay, thank you. Uh, well, I have a, a question and it, it goes like, um, which has been the challenges that you have been like doing on putting this type of, of therapy or intervention on, an, on a school system? Uh, you're saying yeah. that you're uh, offering a, a school counseling and my question is because over here in Mexico, it's, uh, they are too, uh, they're, uh, close to all those types of, of therapies or or group interventions with hip hop or rap. And I have that question because I don't know how uh, the uh, education systems works over there. And that's like my question, uh, which are the challenge that you have been? Yeah. Well, there are many, many challenges. Um, so that I could take forever to respond to that question. Um, I got think- just a minute left, sorry. Yeah, yeah. I think I'll just say, I think a lot of the questions a lot of the, the challenges <clears throat> are attached to what people think hip hop is, right? Um, and particularly in the States, right? Hip hop is time and time and time again used to describe the ills of society. There's an increase in, and that's not true, right? That's how it's used. There was an increase in gun violence in New York City over the summer, okay? The mayor of New York City said it's because there's this style of music in New York City called drill. And like the re which, and the reason that gun violence is up is because kids are rapping about like shooting each other or whatever, right? Like that was the narrative that was shared, which is a false one, right? Um, and so I think all of the challenges that we face in schools can be tethered to the ways that hip hop is perceived. And therefore our work is helping people see beyond that surface level and see the beauty it's like that comment I, you know, when you saw the, the rose and the, and the concrete earlier, some people just see the concrete and they don't see the rose, right? How do we, how do we get folks to see the beauty, um, I think? And when they do, I think that's where we win. And so for me, that's been showcases. Have a, bit, have a youth perform, make some music, get people to show up and listen to it. Get them to introduce their song, play it over the loudspeaker. See the joy in the community, experience the joy in the community. That's how you start to melt down the perceptions of others and then challenge them. Look, I'm in school until 6 p.m. on Fridays, okay, with kids in a studio. How many kids are staying in school until 6 p.m. on a Friday before the weekend? It's not happening, right? but it's happening because the studio is there. And, and they always, people always want to say, like, you know, kids are leaving school to go get involved in activities they shouldn't, whatever. The studios in schools, we got kids vibing in school until we get kicked out. So it ain't hip hop that's the problem. 
Thank you so much, Ian. We had one question from Sarada. We'll just quickly answer that and then we're going to move on. Thank you. So Ian, would you like to read out the question? Yeah, absolutely. So the question was, how do you ensure that participants output are authentic slash therapeutic and not fall on prey to competitive modes like competitions or prizes that can dictate themes and content? Um, which is a question she explained the context to me uh, right before the break, having sort of um, having issues sort of sharing certain things or being able to share some work based on competitions and different, um, you know, protocols or ownership that competitions can take and things like this. And I think this is a, um, when we're doing work, I, I think the, the important thing to remember is like the goal for me, at least when I do this work is not like, I'm not trying to create the next generation of rappers. Right. Um, and that does not mean that there's not going to be some young people that want to go do that. And if they will, then I will support them in that and, and talk with them through that. And there's certainly a lot of ways, perhaps not competitions, but that like uh, larger um, record labels like prey on youth through the deals that they give them and all that. Right. And so the work though is about, for me, more about learning that this is a tool um, learning how to identify hip hop as a essential part of one's identity and to use it um, in ways that advance yourself, right? Eventually, I like to hope that youth can be like, not only am I a good rhymer, but I'm a good public speaker and not, or I'm a good communicator. Not only can I like write really great verses, but to do that, I have to do research. So maybe I'm a researcher, right? I don't think I'd be a writer. I don't think I would have done my dissertation and, and been a professor had I not fallen in love with lyric writing. There's all these ancillary skills. I don't think I'd be able to move through school counselor education, which is my specific field, without some of the savviness and the hustle that hip hop has taught me, right? How to learn the game and assess the game and learn who to partner with and like, uh, you know, I mean, I could go on forever. How to, if I write a paper with this person, it's like a feature, right? Like that person's going to give me a boost. So let me let me go collab with them, so I can I can collab with this next person, right? So it's like it's the hip hop sensibilities, which Dr. Bettina Love writes a lot about, um, a lot about sensibilities um, and and hip hop personhood, she calls it, and these different skills, the the hustle, the real, recognized real, the ability to figure out what's authentic and what's fake and, 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 and acknowledge that, right? All these are hip hop um, and are beyond just like learning hip hop for the sake of rhyming and, 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 and getting paid to rhyme, which is great. I mean, if you can, heck yeah, that's fun. Let's do it. But, but more so like how does it inform how we develop as humans? Um, I think for me is, is kind of what I've been thinking about. And um, yeah, but there's a lot. That's a larger question. You said answer it quickly, and I talked for five minutes, so. Oh, <laughs> yeah. don't, worry. don't worry, it's still yeah. good. Just want to highlight as well, hip hop has many strands and forms, just as we are multifaceted as human beings. We're complex, we have many sides to ourselves, and they present themselves at different times, in different places, in different moments in time. So hip hop is universal. It's democratic every society and culture on planet earth has an element of it and within those cultures there'll be the competitive areas where people are trying to be the best rhymer and have the most technical flow and so on and then people might be processing emotions individually just rapping on a phone note not sharing it with anybody but putting a story together where you sequence events from your personal experience helps you to emotionally process things where trauma is concerned that would happen with your frontal cortex and your self-awareness um kicking in to to sort of bring out the emotions and mood of a moment and that can help you to put certain memories to bed or unify different strands of sensory perceptions that the brain has not been able to process because of shock so traumatic stress and traumatic stress shock can separate brain activity so that instead of working as a whole functions might shut down like for example my speech earlier and um the parts of the brain aren't working to their full capacity so 
We're going to move over now to the final parts of our webinar today. It's been incredible. We have people from the USA, from Mexico, from Australia. So, you know, welcome to everybody. Now we're going to be doing a quick activity to close, which will help inform our checkout. So part of a therapeutic space for healing is setting up relationships and alleviating people's stress. Endings and beginnings can cause stress. So at the start of this webinar, we have half an hour to settle in, talk to each other, creatively represent who we were as a chocolate bar. When we finish, we reflect on things that have happened in the webinar, like we might do in a lyric. So another part of containing complex emotions is having sequences and barriers. So you'll notice that I talked about timings and gave people a heads up one minute, five minute, because that's a boundary that we put between each other and it creates a sense of, I know what's gonna happen next. And for somebody who's experienced trauma, not knowing what is about to happen with your body at any time, because it acts in an unpredictable way, um, is very frightening and it creates all sorts of different um, you know, dysfunctions and cortisol and stress and you know, panting and you know, fight, flight, freeze. So having a, a chance to go back and review something that's familiar now is how we're going to bring our session to the end. So just grab um, a pen or paper, or if you wanna just type in the chat, you wanna do a little bullet point list, write a rhyming couplet, a journal entry, just a couple of words. I want you to think about your hopes and dreams for your practice based on something you've heard today something you might hope to include or a dream that you might want for your practice or your service users or your clients, or you could do a golden nugget from today's webinar that I can take away in practice is, and I'll leave you there. We're gonna share one that's safe to share and check out with. So just give you a few minutes. Okay, I would like you to, Think about one of the ideas that you've got that you wouldn't mind sharing. And we're going to pop that in a, either in a chat, if you don't want to speak and you want to remain off camera, I can read your tip out for you. Or you could come on the mic, share your practice tip, and we will share with everybody. And I just wanted to say quickly, I will have to run shortly to pick my son up from daycare. So if I if I disappear, um, it's it's simply just because of some some obligations I have. But this was fantastic, and I really enjoyed uh, sharing space with you all today. Thank you so much, Ian. Please feel free to uh, collect your son. We won't stop you. Um, so I'll just put down. I'll just finish my one and. Okay, so we've got Sean has put down the importance of including the individual in the planning process. Yeah, thank you. I put down my hope for practices to spread hip hop therapy training in an accessible way. And my dream is to build a cipher. Amanda's reflecting about making the space together, about the studio could be a therapy space. Amber Lee is put, not great with my words, but we'll focus on the verbs and do good, make change, listen. Thank you. Kate said, building up a music pie, Ian Levy's tips are fly. <laughs> That's wicked. I want to be involved in the cipher, reflecting on how everyone has a place within a cipher, whether it be supportive, appreciative or active. Well, India, we had a rapper over from Ireland called Ophelia, and she's going to be doing a cipher documentary with us here in Birmingham, where MCs will be doing just that. So, India, you can come to the studio. We'll be blasting out some recording and some beats. Tobias, lyric writing and mixtape making in community and with refugees. Wicked. For starters, getting knowledge up and intertwining with my skills. Tobias, amazing. We'll stick the, th the theory, therapy, toolkits and stuff like that that we've got in the um, 
resource toolkit, some literature as well. Sarada, can I read hip hop exercise? Um, we've got a teen minutes beforehand. So if you think it, if you could just read maybe two, two lines so that we can all have a chance to share. And then maybe if we've got time at the end, we can come back to it. The thing I want to highlight is the way that you brought the break into it, you know, the break in speech, the break in thought pattern. So I've just done that when I've done it. I've done it. I'm fragmented at cis and broad bonds and broken tools. You know, I've, I've gone with that idea of bringing the trauma in the actual um, syntax. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you so much. And hopefully if we if we have enough time, we'll be able to come back to hear the rest. Thank you. Amanda saying brilliant. Okay, lovely. Has anybody else got a reflection, a hope for their practice, a dream? Okay, so we've got, I think it was Marcelise. Hope I got that right. A golden nugget from today's webinar is self-expression is important. And I shall allow that time for my students. Hip hop is healthy. Yes, thank you. Uh, Gerardo saying there's a reflection, the use of power of hip hop to heal a lot of problems that violence and poverty brings to society. And then Carly, Kieran, my golden nugget was your honesty in sharing how PTSD affects you. If you can do all your amazing work, my trauma can help me drive this forward. Oh, thank you so much, that's so sweet. Yeah, it's because of the you know, personal experience, it's uh, important to use that to shape our own services that we wanna see. And this is something that I wanna see. So it's passionate passionately driven because I, I wish I had hip hop therapy 18 years ago 20 years ago okay anybody else want to come on maybe onto the mic and and talk Tobias saying everything said resonated fully fire yeah wicked okay what I think I'll do is I will bring us to a close on the recording and just click stop there thank you so much